is Tajay Gale's knee injury getting worse? Should we as Jamaicans be concerned? Welcome back to the channel, people. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, thank you for making it Peter Lloyd World. Now go ahead, please hit the subscribe button so we can continue to grow and flourish. We're getting so close to those 10,000 subs and it's because of persons like yourself. So go ahead, hit the subscribe button. Also, if you enjoy our content, remember, hit the like button. As I've said to you in the past, and if this is the first time you're hearing it, the algorithms absolutely love the engagement. It's very, very important. So go ahead, people, hit that subs, that, sorry, that like button. And finally, do not forget to leave a comment. I often learn a tremendous amount because I realize a lot of you are very knowledgeable where track and field is concerned. Um, sometimes we agree. Sometimes we have to agree to disagree. Sometimes I laugh. Sometimes you almost make me cry. But the engagement is something I appreciate and you don't have to do it. So I, I appreciate love when you leave a comment. So are you ready to talk about this? Are you ready to discuss the amazing Tajay Gale? Are you ready? Yep. Good to go. Tajay Gale has emerged in recent years as what one could, find, could define as a find, a remarkable treasure. This young man, who is a long jump phenom, admired by many, including the great Carl Lewis and the current world long jump record holder, Mike Powell of the United States, whose world record jump is a remarkable 8.95 meters. Young Tajay Gale is now being promoted as the great hope for Jamaican male sprinting by the remarkable Stephen Francis. Tajin especially um, good enough to challenge for the uh, title of fastest Jamaican. This endorsement from arguably one of the top three greatest sprint coaches of all time, Stephen Francis, is one that should be taken very, very seriously. As I've stated on many occasions, Stephen Francis tends to be very correct when he makes these kinds of predictions about an athlete. Now, Tajay Gale has demonstrated all the necessary ingredients that tells me that this prediction is highly plausible and very, very possible. However, there is a concern that one must address. Look at it as kind of like the elephant in the room, people. All right. Um, it's a concern that I think any of us who know anything about, even the most rudimentary, the most basic aspect of track and field, would realize that's something that we need to look at and uh, we need to examine. All right. Tajay Gale has, well, look, I have a great, great vlog on Tajay Gale. I'm going to leave a link to it. You guys should go watch it. It's a really, really good a great vlog and you all you all seem to love it i'm going to leave a link to it but suffice it to say tajay gale shows the necessary important ingredients to become a world class he's already the one of the best if not the best in the world right now as a long jumper certainly one of the top three and he's demonstrated all the necessary uh traits qualities in his persona that tells me that he can transition this into becoming a great sprinter. The 2019 Sportsman of the Year in Doha, one became the first Jamaican male to win gold in the World Championships in the long jump with an unimaginable jump, you just saw it, of 8.69. The jump was so remarkable that Mike Powell, the present world record holder when he saw the jump he almost jumped in fact he jumped out of his seat that's mike powell the reigning world record holder 8.95 uh, astounded by that remarkable jump by tajay gale 
at the Doha World Championships in 2019 where he took the coveted title of world champion long jumper. That should tell you everything. I mean, that's serious stuff, people. <laughs> that's serious stuff. That's Mike Powell. That's Mike Powell freaking out over that 8.69 meters jump, which is not that far away from 8.95. I mean, within the realms of possibility, it says that uh, Tajay Gale has a chance. Now, early this year at the Velocity, Velocity <laughs> Fest at the National Stadium, out of nowhere, he gets up and he just runs 100 meters and runs 10.70, winning, easing down at the line at least a full five, seven meters out and sort of shocks everyone. You know, I mean, we should have seen this coming. I mean, he, he's pretty fast on that run up to his long jumps. But I was honestly surprised. I'm not joking. I was honestly surprised. This was impressive. Um, world champion Tajay Gale missed out on the medals in the men's long jump event at the Tokyo Olympic Games in Tokyo, Japan. Gale, who sustained a knee injury in the qualification round on Saturday, was only able to find enough strength to muster a distance of 7.69 for 11th place in the finals. So, this is at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Um, he was severely injured, people. I mean, like, he was seriously, seriously injured. And uh, the grit and determination that he showed to, I mean, he qualified on his very final jump in the qualifying rounds uh, to make that 7.69, which, you know, his PB is 8.69. So this is way below um, what he, you know, would normally jump. That injury concerned me. I mean, you know, you all know I keep talking about injury, the vein of athletes and how long an injury can take. I mean, you know, in terms of still based on what she's saying, still has moments with her with her uh, Achilles heel uh, situation. So I was really concerned that he, I mean, I was, I admired his grit and his determination. The fact that, you know, he was willing to sacrifice that much for, uh, not for self. He didn't do this to prove a point. I mean, he's already the world champion and he's already easily one of the top three jumpers on the planet Earth as we speak. I was truly impressed by his grit and determination, but it was obvious that this was a very, very serious um, knee injury. And, you know, a knee injury, well, like any other injury, can create problems. And injuries take a very long time to heal, you know. Uh, because you see the athlete up and down and running and training, that doesn't always mean that they are fully healed, which is the entire point of this video um when he was asked by the glean why he did that he said jamaica needed me which was very very admirable now after he ran the 10.7 in his final 100 meter race that i am aware of at the jaa's and that national also at the national um arena uh, sorry the national stadium look at this look at this dominance easing down at the line 10.18 that's that's pretty serious that that that's serious speed so we know that he has a lot of natural speed he has great he turns up on the occasion he's very very focused and determined but that knee thing people today he 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 put out a post that concerned me he wrote um jamaica's under constant lockdown been here for two weeks now and unable to get any kinds of treatment on my knee you heard what i said so me and YBN Rash had to make that trip to Miami. So far, so good. Hmm. That concerned me, you know what I'm saying? Um, obviously, his knee is still giving him a lot of trouble. And he himself seems to be concerned that he's here in Jamaica and he can't get um, the necessary work done on his knee. So it means that he's not fully or 100% healed and we need him 100% healed for the 2022 um, season for some reason that that post 
got me concerned. Um, I had hoped that we wouldn't need to see him doing any treatment towards his knee and obviously even he's concerned because he was saying that um, he had been here for weeks and because of the lockdowns he was just unable to get it treated so he had to go all the way to Miami to 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 get treatment done so it either means that the the old injury from earlier this year has you know reignited it has started back and that's why I asked the question is his knee injury getting worse should we as his uh, fans and as his fans across the world and Jamaican fans of Tajay Gale and those people who are hoping that he, Stephen Francis's words become true and he becomes a brilliant sprinter should we be worried about this injury because he, to me in that post he seems to be worried himself um, so is what I mean what do you think do you think his knee injury is getting worse it sounded like he was very concerned to me I mean maybe I'm seeing what's not there you should tell me do you think it's getting worse do you think this is just you know par for the course regular stuff maybe it's just basic therapy that he needs to to maintain it and keep the injury keep the knee injury free it sounds to me as if the injury is just not where it should be at this point in the season let me know your thoughts I really want to hear um, as always Hit the subscribe button so we can continue to grow. We're almost at that 10,000 subs and that's simply because of you and your participation. Hit the like button if you uh, enjoy our content, you know. Um, the algorithms of the engagement is really important. And it's free to hit the like button, people. So hit that like button. It really helps out the channel. Share uh, the videos if you really enjoy them. And of course, I am really ask you to leave a comment about this. Do you think that we should be worried about his injury? Do you think his injury, his knee injury is getting worse? I'd love, I'd love to know your thoughts. Remember, you are kings and queens. Avoid negative people. Believe in yourselves. And bless up.